Welcome back. I'm Mabel Jong. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. And we're going to be talking with a couple of folks who've worked together on a project uh, we have in the studio right now. De Debbie Blackner, Auxiliary Services Program Manager out of the state of Washington, and Tim Moore, Director of Healthcare at SmartSource, based in California. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Now, how did it uh, turn out that the two of you worked together on a project out of the state of Washington? Let's go with you first, Tim. We have 20 plus years of experience in healthcare communications. That's what we consider our expertise. Four years ago, we had an individual from the state of Washington Health Department reach out to us and say, can you do newsletters? We said yes. And then more more conversation, more uh, discussions, and we developed a very unique one-on-one -on -one communication tool called Wellness Education Newsletter Service. And so that's how we got to working together in the state of Washington. Very good. And Debbie, <coughs> why at the time did you need something as specific as that? A newsletter talking about what? So we were moving our personal care service out of our 1915C Home and Community Services based waiver into our Community First Choice Option State Plan Service Plan. And we needed to find a monthly service that we could offer to our clients under our uh, COPES waiver, which is our 1915C waiver, um, that would be monthly that would be individualized, uh, specific to one individual's needs. And so that's why we were looking for something to fill that need. Okay. It needed to be cost efficient, it needed to be personalized, it needed to be actionable. Okay. And it's an actual physical newsletter that um, people is, get every month? Is mailed to every recipient every month. Okay. That's an interesting <clears throat> option these days since so many people seem to be online and want their news um, virtually. So what made you decide that this would be a good solution? I'll let Debbie answer that question because okay. there was a very specific reasons why. Okay. Right. And so one of the things that we have to do under a 1915C waiver is um, uh, actually deliver the service. Some of the uh, barriers to use an electronic mode of com communication would be um, knowing whether or not the individual actually opened uh, the email or opened the application to access the information. Whereas if we know it, it made it to their mailbox, we can say we delivered the service as required per CMS's rules. Mm -hmm. Is there a way of knowing exactly that uh, people are reading this? Yes, we, we have been conducting surveys of the pool of recipients, which is about 45,000 people. Um, we survey them annually and 94% uh, of them say the newsletters, they receive them, it's helpful. And um, so we know that they receive them. We ask them, uh, is it helpful? And more than half say, yes, it is. And the most important thing and, and the exciting part about it is that 46% of those respondents say that they've made changes to their behavior based on the health information they've received in the newsletter, which is very exciting because the big issue, of course, in uh, caring for a frail and elderly population is changing behaviors. And that's, that's the hardest thing. And we, we feel very proud of the work we're doing because we think it actually does help people in their day-to-day -day lives. Okay, so is that the target audience, um, senior citizens? So we care for um, Medicaid recipients that are receiving uh, personal care, long-term services and supports in our um, uh, state plan and waiver services in the state of Washington. So that includes our individuals with intellectual disabilities. Um, as well as our um, low-income seniors and disabled populations. Mm -hmm. What can we learn from this, Tim? Is it perhaps that if you're reaching um, an elderly population that a form of communication is actually paper? Uh, you're an expert in this area, Tim. What do you think? Well, the, the best answer to it is you have to meet people where they are. And for this particular population, a majority of them still prefer paper. As, as archaic as that sounds in our computerized world, it's actually not. So we, we deliver communications across all channels. So we do paper, we do email, we do smartphone. We know how to do all that kind of stuff. But the rate of adoption for smartphones has never exceeded 20%. So if you're trying to communicate with 100% of the people, you're stuck in that barrier. And even e email is actually worse than smartphones. It's about 10%. And paper is still much higher, 70, 80%. But it, there's 
specific conditions that make that really effective. The communication has to be brief, uh, it has to be uh, relevant to the person, and it has to have useful information, actionable steps, or things that make people want to do things to improve their health. And that's, you know, people have, in this day and age, have got to take control of their own health because the government's not going to do it for you. So uh, we're fortunate in the ability, we're very good at handling data. <clears throat> we know how to manipulate data and we know how to present that data in ways that people can use. And so, Did you learn a lot from this, Debbie? Uh, will, you, will this translate to other communications that you have with this particular group of community of people? Well, so the, the unique thing that is offered through our wellness education uh, newsletter, our service, um, is that it, uh, it's completely targeted to individuals based on their needs. And so um, based on our, our assessment system, we would know what diagnoses a client would have, what uh, needs they have as far as their social determinants of health, um, and we can target a newsletter specifically to them. So this is unique in that each, each issue that's sent at the 40 some odd thousand that we send out every month, each each issue is different, unique to that individual's needs. So no two copies look alike. Um, the individual doesn't receive uh, the same article more than once, which is also um, amazing. Um, so I think uh, we actually see other um, service providers coming to us to include information in our newsletter um, because our, our product is so unique um, at the state of Washington. And so good, it sounds like. Yeah. And so, Tim, what did you learn from working on this? I learned, I learned that when you have a, a customer such as the state of Washington who are completely open from the get-go in trying to design a service or a product, uh, you end up with a fantastic outcome because that honesty allows us to, to innovate and, and manipulate and think of new ways to do things out of the traditional box. And we're very proud of it. And uh, we, we think it, it does it great. And so uh, what I've learned is I try to get people to be as open as quickly as they can be with their problems, with their strengths, with their weaknesses. And, and the state of Washington people were fantastic in that regard. They just said, look, here's, here's our issues, here's our problems, here's what so I kept saying, you know, what does that perfect solution look like to you? And they were completely honest, and, and by and large, we were able to build it. So I'm very proud of that part. All right. Well, thank you to you both. Uh, okay. Tim Moore, Debbie Blackner, thanks for your time. Thank you Thank you. Much. And I'm Mabel Jong. Stay with us. We have many more interviews to come.